I'll talk about uh, rod and reels. You know, sweetie, when uh, I lived in Russia when I was a kid, about six years old, mm -hmm. we, uh, we made our own uh, rod from a twig of a tree. Uh -huh. And then uh, whatever thread we can find, we'll put thread on it. And you know what we use for, for a hook? Staple. <laughs> I mean it. Does Reeve like to go fishing with you? No. She's not much of an outdoor sportswoman. Does she go on the boat, though? Uh, yes. Yes, we went on the boat last year. Now, here's something really interesting. I'm invited on a yacht, and here's where I can get stockings wholesale. Now, that's something. And here's a, a real schmaltzy card from my cousin Ruthie and... California. She's been married three times, so she knows everything there is to know about marriage. How long have we been dating? Yeah. Ever since 1984, I believe, when we went to uh, went to England, you know, uh -huh. and to do uh, some painting. Don't forget, she's a very good painter. I used to pay two dollars a tube. I just looked at this. I couldn't believe it. I paid six, seven dollars for one tube of this stuff. I don't know who's making all that money. It's terrible. So, Grandpa, you think that I should get married? How come, uh, how come you could live with Reva, huh? How come you could live with her and I can't live? Uh, listen, dear. We are octogenarians. We cannot do any harm to one another. Uh -huh. Reva won't get pregnant, and we don't have to bother with taking pills and all that <laughs> sort of a thing. Yeah, bohemian. I'm not very bohemian. That might be attractive. I think I've become more popular since I've been doing these bad things, living with a man to whom I'm not married. I feel young, I'm interested in many, many areas, and I have to do things. I cannot sit idle and do nothing. The most perfect day for me would be to get up in the morning, thanks God that I'm alive, and proceed to do things which I enjoy doing. And my enjoyment is art. I'm always with a sketching pad, and I never go without a sketching pad and pencil. When I go out on a trip, or uh, even when I go out fishing, if the fish doesn't bite, I have my pencil ready and pad ready, and here I go, and it's uh, just as entertaining to me as it is to throw a line in the water. You may want to know how I became uh, a painter. I was born in Russia, and uh, I came here when I was about 13 years old. Immediately went to a class where to learn English, Going to school, I stopped at a window where a painter was doing portraits such as these were small ones and then big ones. I said, well, I put my nose against the glass and I said, what, how the heck can he do this? Make a likeness from this little snapshot over here and a huge painting. I said, See, that's what I like to do my, when I grow up. It was portrait painting. Portrait painting, I love portraiture. Get into the inside of the sitter and get the essence, the gestures, of how, what he's or what he's not. I was the happiest person in the world when I, when I held a brush in my hand and dipped it into paint and then something came off my canvas. I loved it. I still do, I should say so. to me that most people who are my age don't think they have very much future. And they always seem to live like in the past. They'll talk about Auntie so-and-so from so-and-so that you never heard of. Or they'll talk about their cousins from so-and-so and so-and-so. Boring. 
The most unfortunate group of women are those whose children are grown, whose husband has probably gone. They have nothing in life to interest them. Every day somebody else of my age leaves us, and uh, I've just decided that's the way life is, and why, why mourn? Why not just go on living? And I think that I've made a very big success of living as I get, got older, and I think my painting has contributed to that because I have made many friends among artists, and I think that painting keeps me busy. When I feel sad or nervous or upset, I go in and paint, and the world is lost. My father did not approve of anybody in our family being an artist because his opinion of artists was not very good. But my first love was always art. I read about it. I studied it. I went to the Art Institute. I married and went to Denver. And then when I came back here, I had two children. And when my youngest son went to college, I said, listen, you want to paint? It's now or never. So I went to Center for Creative Studies, then known as Arts and Crafts. Now, people say to me that I paint flowers better than almost anybody else in the state. I don't paint them because they're a bouquet that was sent in by the florist. I paint them because I grew them, I tended them, and I love them. I pull a flower apart before I ever paint, examine every little petal, how does it grow, and I've tried to paint something beautiful that will give joy to the owner. This is a very good sculpture. Classic, mm -hmm. classic mm -hmm. example. Later in life, I've met this wonderful man. He's a beautiful portrait artist, and he's a man who's truly attuned to art. Oh, there it is. Uh, look, at, look at this. Isn't that uh, beautiful? Stay with me. That is really this is, this a wonderful is, painter. Uh, this is Sargent. This is typical, one of the best things. You know, at, thir at 13 years old, he said to his mother, I'm going to be a painter. And he, uh, his, mother was, his mother was a watercolorist. Is that so? Oh, absolutely. That's where he got his inspiration. And, uh, look, th look at the, the way those violets are painted. I don't think anybody surpassed him. Now, he was taught painting in the 20s and 30s, whereas I didn't start to paint till the 50s. And I learned a much more modern technique than he did. Now, this is my favorite. Now, I know you're going to say, why, what do you like about it? So what? So what? Now, I want you to first look at it carefully. Don't say, so what? Look at it. What? What? Look what? at the wonderful colors in there. Beautiful colors. Levi, really, well, he painted a colored red, you know, over primed canvas. Now, just a minute. Blended with, with brown. So what? He was a, one of the first to use these brilliant, controversial colors. All right. This kind of color was not heard of to use Why? violets and oranges and reds. But that isn't what made really, him well, famous. Really, well. You can always put this dark. Yeah, you over, can, but over. nobody thought of it before he did. That's what made him famous. But let me tell you something. The real excitement of this painting yes. is the luminous quality of the paint. Now, look at that red, how it vibrates. It doesn't vibrate. Look, look at the colors. Talk about a vib vibration. Look at the colors out here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the beautiful form. I don't care much for that. To this day, I absolutely can't see anything to his painting. See, there you are. There you are. That's there, a very... There again, I disagree with you. I, I can't see anything. This is very it doesn't... Good if you don't. It isn't... What's beautiful about it? The arrangement of colors is oh, terrific. Yeah. This is a man there. by the name of there, Barnett Newman. No, Vassio, this one. Vassio. Barnett Newman. Huh? We just have a wonderful time together. We're very happy together. I love her simplicity, her uh, sense of humor, and her artistic uh, nature. We have lots of joy being together. Beautiful museum. I had met Lewis once before. For some strange reason, we both sat next to each other. And this was on a great big 747 going to England. So we sat there, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked all the way across, only stopping long enough to eat. And we just were so compatible. We just didn't feel like we were on a plane. The time just passed. On uh, this trip, when we went to the uh, southern part of England, uh, we were assigned, in one of the towns, we were assigned uh, quarters. And Lewis got a beautiful room overlooking the ocean and everything and passers-by. And me, I got a room that looked like a close closet. I was furious. And there wasn't even a bathtub in it, nothing. Lo and behold, she picks up her luggage Knocks on the door, who is there? 
But Rima Schrader with her luggage, he says, this is what I'm staying with you, Lou. So I just packed my suitcases and I moved in with Louis because he had a big room and he didn't object at all. And so then we became very friendly. <laughs> It was Little Fever and I. <laughs> the group thought it was great. Well, I thought it was a natural way of doing things. And uh, we've always been together. Whatever it was, it was together. And the romance uh, grew uh, in proportions. And um, I think we're a very compatible pair. And to this day, we talk the same language. We go to every opening. We paint together, and he criticizes my work, and I criticize his work. To take this road because it's more scenic. He drives, right I give directions, which he totally ignores. He goes the wrong way, but that's all right, that's what he likes. Oh, boy. This way, oh, that's beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. Now, with the paprika on the top of that. Everybody said, why don't you get married? But you know, marriage is such a strange thing. I think when you're young, you should get married, definitely, because then the children have a father. But uh, as you get older, what's the difference? I think living together is you know what you're getting. You know all his funny little quirks and his good habits and his bad habits. And uh, sometimes a perfectly nice man can do things that annoy you to death. There's a paper towel right there and open the door. Right in their door is some... I know, I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna just, sleep it up. No, just put it on top, it'll absorb it. I got a better way to go. Oh, well, all right, all right. Finally decided to give up the apartment. I think it's best for me and for... Uh, she wouldn't let me go. She says, why don't you come in, move in with me, and uh, be part of our... Uh, together. It's a schlep to come every time from my apartment to hers, so I decided. I, I, I decided in the last uh, couple of weeks, I take a little things, she let the long hair and put them away and so forth. And she was very uh, interested in that sort of thing. It's wonderful, she said. She would bring the, uh, clean out one of the closets, hung my clothes in there, brought my shoes, my books are down in the basement. And little by little, we're going to get everything out of my apartment. And this is our home. In 1928, my wife, we declared our love for each other. Oh, sweetie. She was a practical woman. She was very supportive in the way of my work. Never said, no, you got to stop and do something else. Leona, she was a very good woman. I loved her, and she, I'm sure she loved me. My wife acquired uh, this Alzheimer disease. It was a torturous 10 years that she had went through. I had to take good care of her. It was progressively worse and worse with each each year. Finally, we put her into a, uh, a nursing home. And I used to come to visit her almost every day. She died in 1983, November 1983. And her life was ended. My life has up to a certain point been very happy. I had a wonderful husband who adored me and I adored him. And he was at the height of his business and career and he was terribly proud of everything I did. I had fine children, bright children, and uh, I was doing something that I loved. And then <clears throat> I've lost everybody that was dear to me. I lost my son Dick, who was then in his 40s, handsome, and he died of cancer when he was in his 40s. And uh, 
then I lost my husband. And then unfortunately in the last year, my son Warren was drowned down in Costa Rica while he was scuba diving. So we're left with nobody, no family really, except my grandchildren and my daughter-in-laws. And that's all. But I've had to live through it and I've managed to keep fairly cheerful and I, my sorrows I keep to myself. You see this painting over there on the wall? I did that of Riva right after her son drowned. I said, Riva, how about doing a portrait? About three weeks after his uh, uh, departure. But I couldn't get her to smile or uh, get a normal expression. It, that's, this is the mood that she was in, and it, it was retained that way. However, I think I'm going to do another portrait of her, uh, larger than that, maybe full figure. And I want to paint a gracious lady with a lot of charm and life. At 84, she is full of life. It's unusual. And I want to capture that into a, when I get her to sit for me. And I think I'll do it. I'm a little smile. Mm, that's right. It makes it, it makes it so much more interesting. You have that pucker up in my. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. I know it's. It's very difficult. And I'm getting a little, little, little bit, little bit, just a little bit. That's good. The thing that the neck has to be washed a little bit different. That's good. It's okay. It's this where I want to get. Ah, oh dear. I'll give you a rest very soon. Very, very soon. Not, not right now. No, hold it. Hold, hold, hold it, kid. You can sleep here. I know. I posed when I. You know, I paid my tuition by posing. Mm -hmm. I should say so. Coming, coming, coming. You gotta adjust the values. Quit. Just a minute now, just a minute, just a minute. Well, believe it or not, in the 30 some years I've been painting, I have never painted peonies. Although I grow them in my garden and I have hundreds of them. And it's very tempting. But very few artists have succeeded in uh, painting peonies. They're a very complicated flower and take a lot of time. Now, one of the interesting things about peonies is that after you have them three days and you're so thrilled with them, they fall apart. Then you got to go and get someone to cut them all down or cut them down yourself. But that takes a lot of time from your painting, as does housework. Housework is the worst enemy of an artist. Don't care for it. Now, these are buds. Hopefully, tomorrow they will open up. And this one has, this is the back of the flowers. See, because the flower is leaning over. And this is the jumpy part. You could really have a few drinks and paint peonies because your hands are sort of shaky. See, that's how paint peony looks. And this is the back of the peony. Then from there, I'll draw the buds and the, the little branches of leaves. So after I get all this done, then I will start possibly with a color. I've got to admit that I'm older, but I tell you something, this is something that keeps you young forever. In order to accentuate a flower, you have to have something dark behind it. I have a few dark leaves. Not enough. Now, wait a minute. You and I come from different schools. We've been living together now for two years, and we're both getting older, and I hope that if anything happens to him, I can take care of him, or if anything happens to me, he can take care of me. That's what I call love. I feel that I miss her when I'm away from her. And she, on many occasions, told me that she misses me tremendously when I'm not with her. You know, most of these lilies...
with every widow, there's many, many nights and days of loneliness. Don't stay home and grieve. Move. Go out. You'll meet other people and it will enhance your life. We might as well enjoy every day when we can. That's a Most beauty. people look at it, they don't know that's what a, it that's is. That's a beauty. We touch, we hold hands, and we kiss all the time. But um, that's, that's it. After all, when you're 80, you're not physically uh, attuned like you are when you're 30 or 20. But that isn't important anymore. It's stronger than just physical love. I think it's nice when you're in bed to have someone to kind of hug to and keep warm with. And that's what it's all about. It's very lonely being in bed all by yourself, nobody else in the house. Two, two bifocals. When two bifocals meet. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how it happened. But I'm better than you. I got trifocals. She asked me. She said, all of a sudden, we have, you know, at around 4 o'clock, we have a, a drink. She had a drink of scotch. I had a drink of bourbon. We sit in the uh, living room over a, over a glass of scotch. Look, how about getting married? I said, what? Said, yeah, I mean it. Should, we should get married. That's about the time we get married. Says, I say, there's no reason why we should not. rejoicing because of you both, because you have found each other, because you have found the kind of companionship and understanding and tenderness. When life begins not at 40, but in the 80s, and when each of you coming from different backgrounds, with your own long stories, each now finds the other. You have given hope and inspiration to so many. No matter what life brings to you, you are never down, but there is always a tomorrow of hope because you are young at heart. And now I ask you, Lewis, of your own free will and consent, do you take Reva to be your wife and do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect her throughout all your days, in health or in sickness, for better or for worse. I do. 
And do you, Reva, of your own free will and consent, take Lewis to be your husband? And do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and protect him throughout all your days in health or in sickness, for better or for worse? <laughs> I know you can't wait until I ask you the questions. But surely this is that beautiful moment. <laughs> Our prayers are that the Almighty may smile upon your marriage and bless you each with health, with understanding, with compassion, and all the moments of joy to celebrate life. Amen. Now, Lou, will you take this ring, place it upon the finger of your bride, Riva, and repeat after me to her these words, hallowed by... It's a lover ring. You get the ring on. Be thou consecrated unto me. Unto me. By this ring. By this ring. As my wife. As my wife. In accordance with the faith of Judaism. In accordance with the faith of Judaism. And Reva, I am my beloved. I am my beloved. And my beloved is mine. And my beloved is mine. I, Richard C. Hertz, a rabbi in Israel, do hereby declare and proclaim that I have this day solemnized the marriage of Louis and Reva Schwader Gotthel. Fairy tales can come true, it can happen to you if you're young at heart. For it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind if you're young at heart. You can go to extremes with impossible dreams. You can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams. And life gets more exciting with each passing day. And love is either in your heart or on the way. Don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be young at heart? For as rich as you are, it's much better by far to be young at heart. If you should survive to a hundred and five, look at all you derive out of being alive. And here is the best part, you have a head start if you are among the very young at heart. survive to a hundred and five look at all you derive out of being alive and here is the best part you have a head start if you are